Welcome to Forum 360 on PBS Western Reserve. I'm Stephanie York, your host today. Thank you for joining us for a global outlook with a local view. What's the buzz around Akron? It's Akron Honey, of course. Brent Wesley, beekeeper and founder of Akron Honey, took two blighted vacant city lots and created two urban honeybee apiaries making Akron Honey a model of sustainability. Akron Honey raises honeybees in Akron's neighborhoods. They harvest only their surplus of honey in small batches without filtering or straining. Why is this news? What's the buzz? Well, we'll find out today. Thank you, Brent. Wesley the Keeper, as I'm told, <laughs> for joining us today. I was waiting for you to say that, Wesley, Wesley the Keeper. Wesley yeah. the Keeper. And thank you for having, having me. I appreciate of course. it. Yeah. Of course. So can you tell me a little bit about yourself, your background, and how you ended up as Wesley the Keeper? Yeah, it, it's, it's kind of crazy. So back in like 20, it was 2010, 2011, 2013, you know, I was working full time with Verizon Corporate, and I was with them like for 15 years, really long time. And there was this vacant lot around the corner from our house, and this is like 2013. And I don't know, I, I just bought it. And like, well, here's the thing, you know, being married, you we bought it, yeah, right? So sure, I had to ask sure. for. So I asked, I got so my wife You're let a good me man. buy. Well, my wife, well, it's a it's a team sport. Of my, my wife let me buy it, and <laughs> and then uh, you know off we went. I just, I just like Googled how to keep bees. Uh, you know, a lot of folks did like you know classes and stuff. I, I'm just like a hands-on learner, so. Uh, I just Googled how to keep bees and just started harvesting honey and uh, off, off we went. Okay, so yeah. I got to ask you, yeah. what was the first moment that made you say, I want to have a beehive? All right, I, <laughs> that's a really good question. A lot of interviews don't ask that question, but I'm, I'm going to answer, can I answer please, that real quick? All right, please, please, so I need to know. There are two things that happen. Okay. Uh, so former life, well, current life, a yeah, musician as well. Uh, it was Wesley Bright and the Highlights and then Wesley Bright and the Honey Tones. Oh, yeah. Did you know that? I don't I know do. You know. Okay. I mean, I've heard of that. I didn't know it was yeah. you. Yes. Yeah. so he yeah, has the same person. Got it now. It's I don't all know clicking. What like that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and the Honey Tones. I and, remember that. And the Honey that. Tones, exactly. So back when we were playing, playing out a lot, uh, my guitar player brought some honey to uh, rehearsal once. And it was like from his beekeeper friends. Okay. And the thing is when your beekeeper friends bring you honey, it's like the rawest stuff. It's like they just pull right. it out. And it was, it was super raw. And he didn't, he didn't want it because there's a lot of, he said there's bee parts and stuff in there. I was like, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I tasted it and I was like, holy crap, this is like really, really good. Right. And then I'm like, all right. So then like about two weeks later, my wife and I went down to Amish country. Yes. I think it was Berlin. I think it was Berlin. Yep. And they had this honey on tap system Ooh. and it was nice and warm. It was like delicious. And you gotta understand that's the first, those are the first instances in which I had honey that wasn't from the shelf. So right. I'm like, all these things are happening one time. Like, you know, I'm getting this ex experience with honey and then we bought, we're buying this vacant lot. And right. so it all clicked. I'm like, okay, we got to do honeybees. Cause I didn't know exactly <laughs> what I wanted to do. Maybe urban farming, whatever, but like honeybees. Right. And that was, that was kind of it. That was it. That was the thing. Yeah. Um, so what made you think you could make honey? Like you could actually make a business out of this? I, I actually didn't. You didn't. So, <laughs> so you just said, okay, we're gonna try this bee thing yeah, and it, see yeah. what happens just for fun. Yeah, to start. I, just, I just didn't wanna have to buy honey again. Like it wasn't supposed to be a business. Okay. It was just gonna like, I intend, here's the thing. I intended on working with Verizon for the rest of my life. I was making good money. Sure. Benefits were stacking up. It was, you know, great life. The family's growing. My wife yeah. could stay at home. Right. And it was really good. And I intended on staying there. However, I, I guess the way in which it turned into a business is from it. I was just listening to what people were saying. They were saying, okay. let me buy that. Let me buy that. So now you have like kind of proof of concept. People are able and willing to buy your stuff, whatever that is. Right. And then, I don't know, we, I, just, I just kind of followed that path. I just kind of just kept on doing what they were asking us to do. We need to buy more honey. We, so we just started getting more hives. And, you know, like I know you mentioned in the uh, intro that there were two vacant lots. And yes. that's true. The first one was in 2013. The second one we bought was in East Akron in okay. 2015. So we just kept on doing what our consumers, which are now known of our, as our honey loves, we were doing uh -huh. what our honey loves were asking us to do. Just, just listen to them. And they, like, provided us the path. So do you have two now or even more? Well, we got two. Okay. You know, and, and, the, and the, um, the, the very business plan, the business model has evolved uh, from just harvesting our own honey right. to partnering with bigger, not even bigger, but other local beekeepers okay. who can, you know, have 
500, 1,000 hives. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, and we can tap their hives, get the raw wildflower honey, oh, and then, wow. yeah, and then we can um, flavor, because we're really in the flavor game. Yeah, so we got to talk about that, too, and I didn't, of course. Look, we have this bare table. I didn't bring any honey. I'm sorry I about know. that. I know. I was hoping for some <laughs> samples. That's my bad. I didn't, you know, right. didn't want to make this thing about, like, oh, here's these products. Like, you know, I just wanted to just shoot it up. Sure, and talk, that's talk, all good. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll expect some later, though. Yeah, you'll get some <laughs> later. I should have. That's my bad. And, and, and uh, yeah, yeah, so that's my bad. So tell me more about bees. We've heard a lot about how bees are becoming extinct. Is that true? Honey I don't bees? believe it. You know, okay. No, I think that, that honeybees have never had a problem other than a human problem. Okay. We, humans are interesting. And one, one, uh, you know, and on one day we'll say, oh, we're going to save the bees and save the world. But then on the other day, we'll call the exterminator. Yeah, call the exterminator. Because <laughs> there's a hive that's e on your exactly, tree that you don't want. Exactly, because it makes your life inconvenient. Like our lives inconvenient. I'm a human too, so I'm going to say our lives inconvenient. Right. So like, it's not, it's not that they're going extinct. It's that we, we are just having our way with the world. That's kind of what, that's the problem. I mean, they didn't have a problem. They've been around for billions of years. They haven't, they didn't have a problem until we came along. Right, <laughs> right. We're kind of new to the scene, you know? Sure. So, <laughs> how did you even know what to do? Uh, the internet. Did you just Google? You just internet. How, how, no, <laughs> internet that's, is an experience. That's fascinating. Yeah. You I just, mean, you had no bee experience when you started this. Just none. No, I actually, just the opposite. I remember, uh, tw it was like 20, 2009, my wife and I went to, Home Depot, because we were building a pergola. And, okay. Well, actually, I built a pergola. Now we're trying to figure out plants that could grow up the pergola, like right. vines. Right, so we have that, too. Exactly. Yeah. So it's nice and yeah. pretty and makes it home and everything. Honeysuckle works. And yeah, it, exactly. And now, I remember, that's <laughs> what the, the, it was a young lady who was helping us out. She's like, okay, we have this kind, this kind of honeysuckle. We're like, oh, honeysuckle. And they're like, okay, it'll, it'll attract bees. And I'm like, no. I literally oh. said, no, that's how, that's how, <laughs> how much I did, did not know about, that's how little I knew about right. honeybees. Right, you're like, no bees. I know, because I'm going to get stung. I knew nothing. Right. I knew nothing at all, you know? That's uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so just le I just learned everything as I went along. Like, I'm the type of person, you give me a little nugget and I'll figure things out. Right. I'd rather it be like that. Right. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people are afraid of bees, as yes. we were talking about. Yeah. Should they be? I mean, unless they're allergic to them. <laughs> but honestly, I you mean, still... You are still they, do they, like, come after you? Nah, do they, they, don't come they at you. Do they only sting if they're threatened? Mm -hmm. do they, yes? Yeah, mm -hmm. and even if they're threatened, they don't always sting you. You know okay. what I mean? Like, they'll, they'll give you warnings. They're like, you know, flying, they'll headbutt you. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and they'll just, like, some, let you know, like, get out of here, get out of here. And sometimes they'll release a uh, pheromone that kind of smells... Uh, like a little bit like banana-ish, oh. and it's it, it's it's a it's a trigger for the rest of the hive to get more defensive. Interesting. And if you've been stung before yeah. and smelled that, psychologically, anytime you smell that, you start feeling sting. So like, oh. you know, that's that's um, another part of their defense mechanism where they'd rather not sting you; they'd rather you just go away. D is it true that if they sting you, they die? Yeah. If they sting us, they die because yeah. their, their barbs get stuck in there and they pull it out, which detaches uh, from Ooh. their body, and then they and then they die. They're very selfless, you know, so yeah. they'll, so th they'll die. But if they, they can sting other insects multiple times. Oh, they can, just not people. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. um, bees, <laughs> wasps. I mean, they're uh, are they all related or? I mean, yeah, they are, they're kind of related. I'm not a bee expert on that. Yeah, you know, like I, yeah. you know. I, I know there's a relation. Uh, yeah. There's just some sort of relation uh, yeah. amongst the, uh, the species. I, I, yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. tell us about your company. Yeah. Tell us about your company. Who, you're the CEO, the beekeeper. Is yeah. this a family business? Do you yeah. have other people that are invested in it? How do, tell me about it. Yeah. So it, it's, it's a family business. You awesome. Know, and you have a big family. You got a big family. Still growing into it. Good. It started, you know, it was, you know, again, it started as a passion me doing my thing but like everyone else is starting to grow into it and you know it's 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 pretty obvious to see if you look at our socials uh akron honey uh, on instagram you yep. know, that's the one that's most lit and you'll see family members pop up and they're in production and they're doing you know pouring honey and then they're uh folding these beautiful super soft sweatshirts awesome. and putting a bowl around them and everything but like our brand look i'll tell you about our brand like our brand is we're a super fun and delicious honey brand and we're really led by like 
flavor. Right. We're, we're going to get into that. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's like, yeah. So we're, we're, we're yeah. crazy different. We're, it's not about the, the jar of honey. It's not, it's about your food. When I'm saying food, I'm talking about food, beverage, like tea, your toast, your biscuits, whatever. Right. And we look at that and then we create flavors that taste really, really good with those things. And you say it's not about the jar, but I hear and I've seen your jar is pretty sleek looking. They, they look good. Yeah, they? <laughs> they're kind of like modern, like yeah. a modern mason jar, but they're like tall and thin. Tall and, and thin, like a little modern design. It's kind of yeah. like, you know, you got, you know, it, it, it's, it's grocery store versus Ikea. Yeah, and like you could like display <laughs> these, right? Because yeah. yeah. they look really cool. Yeah, that's a, that's a part of the, the design concept is that we want it to look so beautiful that folks keep it on their cupboard or, or right. keep it uh, on their counter yep. rather than their cupboard and they take pictures of it and put it on Instagram and, and Etsy and Pinterest and all that stuff. And so where do you sell this? Uh, all over the place now. Um, it used to be before, so just, to, just for you know uh, reference, I jumped into this, although it's been, a, uh, it's been a side hustle for many years since 2013, right. I jumped into this full time uh, 2021. Okay. It was a full-time brand, 2021. Before that, so it's only we been were, a couple years that it's been full-time. Yeah, yeah. And we went from before full-time, like pretty much one distribution point, like Northside Marketplace, to that's where I saw you. That's first. where you saw us yes. first, right? Because they have the incubator there. That was big news. eBay came there and all that yep. stuff. But since then, we've been. You know, you can find us at a lot of different restaurants, uh, wow. like Farmers Rail, the Eye Opener, the Angelos, yeah. Dracy's yeah. up in Cleveland, right? Uh, Cordelia, we're at that uh, really awesome new. It's been rated, I think, one of the best restaurants in the uh, entire country, and they wow. just opened. So, wow. like, we're on their menus. Um, grocery stores, like a lot of grocery stores have. We have a lot of nice. success there. So, Giant Eagle Market District, Giant Eagle now. <laughs> Wow. Uh, Heinen's here in Chicago, Whole Foods here. How and do you keep up with this production? I don't know. You just, I don't know. It's, it's, here's the thing. I've learned from the honeybees. Yeah. They're super efficient. So being around them so much really influenced me to design wow. uh, a, a, a model that also works as efficiently as they do. So, you know, it doesn't take, so let's go back a couple years when we first started and into we, where we ended up now. Um, I told you how, we talked about how many grocery stores we're right. in. We got there with one person, besides myself, one person in production working eight to 15 hours a week. Wow. That's it. That's it. So we were able, and the reason why is because our game is, is looking at the, the flavor in your food. So we, we infuse our honey for flavor that'll taste really awesome with your stuff. So our process isn't labor intensive. It okay. really isn't. So my game really is, is like a marketing game. Because one of the problems we're solving is most people are used to honey brands that are just kind of like normal. They got a normal story. Honey, yeah. They're in a little bear. Right. Maybe they're in a glass bottle, but it's like normal. Right. You know, we come across as exciting. We come across as like that brand that's life. You know, right. and that's what I want. And that's the fun part. If I were doing anything else, I wouldn't want to do it, honestly. Right. I'd find something else to do. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to remind our viewers and those who may have joined late that we are here with Wesley the Beekeeper. Yeah. Wesley the Keeper, uh, founder of Akron Honey. And we are buzzing about honeybees. How Brent was able to start a small business and grow it, and how his passion for learning and sustainability has helped Akron in immeasurable ways. Now, you don't just have this business. You're also enthusiastic about teaching about yeah, honeybees, yeah. right? And, uh, yeah. and well, yeah, just, sustainability just, and things like that. Yeah, well, we, here's the idea. With, with anyone who works with us, and especially myself, if you're, if you're rolling with Akron Honey, if you're on the team, whatever, you have to get used to the, uh, the way of lifting as you climb. Okay. So we're naturally climbing. We're getting better and better, but we don't want to just like leave people behind. Uh, in the school system, for instance, uh, okay. you, you mentioned teaching. Yes. Yeah, we've we've constantly been in the public school system, you know, teaching about awesome. honeybees to kids, and it's it's really purposeful too because a lot of the kids that you find that don't know anything about, first of all, a lot of the kids don't even know where food comes from. They didn't when we started. Sure. And a lot of those kids are black and brown. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it's crazy. So they look like me. You know, they they went through the things that I did, and like you know, they don't they don't know that stuff. And so to have someone come in, especially someone who looks like them, right. come in and say, hey, you know, here's this other world. And by the way, like you can do this too. It's really purposeful and it's really kind of, I'd hope it would be moving. I'm trying not to sound it like is. conceited it about is moving. it. Like so it, here we yeah. are in Black History Month, right? Yeah. Yeah. Talking to a successful homegrown 
African American man that started this business, didn't know a darn thing about yeah, bees, <laughs> started this business and yeah, now is yeah. in all the groceries and restaurants around town. And, yeah, and, yeah. and you're teaching other black and brown students, mm. kids, families, how to do this. Yeah, and I remember, here's the thing, like, you know, you and I were talking before this, yeah. you know, where, where you know, I grew up, I grew up, went from the, from the east side of uh, Cleveland, like in the hood, right. to the country in Aurora. Back in country, I'm saying country because it was in the 80s. Right. Um, although I just shaved, I, I don't look like I was born in the 80s, it's probably <laughs> the 90s, right? <laughs> Your baby, baby face. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, you know, <clears throat> I, uh, when I was in Aurora back then, you know, it really wasn't diverse. It, it probably isn't that diverse now, but it right. really wasn't diverse back then. So, like, I didn't see anyone who was like me doing these, these things. And the importance and the significance of that is if you don't see people who uh, look like you, um, talk like you, walk like you, you, you just won't take your shot. Okay. You won't shoot your shot because you don't realize it's a shot that you can take. So wow. when kids see wow. someone like me do, they go, oh, I can keep bees too. Absolutely. And it was, it's amazing. And it's not just like, you know, black and brown kids. Like sure. little, yeah, I remember we did like this uh, Girl Scout troop and uh, one of the girls was really like afraid. Like I brought like a hive in that, oh, would, yeah. that didn't make it through the winter. So it had dead bees in there. Right. And so we opened it up and she was just looking through, she was scared, but by the end, she's like, hey, can I take a couple home to dissect oh. them? So like, you're turning on lights. Yeah. You're turning on lights, and that's really, that's really important, you know? It's really important that we don't forget to, to uh, you know, give back, I guess. Give yeah. back, but then like, be there. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're there for the community. Which is, you know, and that's a part of our strategy too. Like, we could have taken our business and gone up to Cleveland, we could have gone somewhere else, but we, we invested, are, you know, a portion of our life savings in a commercial building right in Highland Square so that we can create this new model of, of, of honey awesome. experience, but be accessible as well. So in this building, yeah. do you have specialized equipment? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, I like that, I I like that like, shiny stuff, you know, the stainless steel tanks. Yeah. It's, so it's, it pretty much looks like a it's really small okay. brewery right now. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of upgrades over the next two years where it's going to look like a larger brewery. So adding garage doors to the front, new flooring, knocking nice. out some walls, creating an outdoor space, like a courtyard around the building. Um, and possibly even dipping into a food venture. Wow. Yeah. Now tell us about the flavoring. Yeah. Tell us. Yeah, tell yeah. So I know honey is honey. Just yeah. plain old honey. That's in Western culture. That's most that's people are like that. Like honey. I put honey. it in my tea. And you, it's yes, tea, toast, biscuits, top that's three it. ways. So tell me how else I can use it. So you can. Here's the thing. We don't want to challenge our honey loves. We want to enhance how you're using your stuff. So if you use yes. your stuff, you honey with tea, great, but just try this bourbon barrel tea or Ooh. bourbon barrel honey Ooh. with that tea. So we, we create, like I said, we create flavors based on what people eat. So okay. we have four flavors right okay, now. So we got the traditional raw wildflower. It's okay. nothing surprising, just really, really good honey. Everyone is familiar with it, raw wildflower, got okay. it. But then we have bourbon barrel honey, which mm. came about as a collaboration between us and Cleveland Whiskey, where they cut down their barrels for us and we okay. infuse those. In our in our honey for a matter of days. Ooh, so you use the parts of the barrel. Mm -hmm. so yeah. So the, awesome. the flavor isn't it's in like the a, alcohol. It's in, it's the, in the oaky or whatever. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Now I'm really kicking myself. We should have had a honey taste in live, but it's no, all good. No, it's, okay. it's all good. It's all good. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go taste it. So we got in addition to that, we have hibiscus honey. A lot oh, of yeah. folks were like, "Yo, you need a, a fruity is, yeah. flavor." So we said, for "Okay." Sure. We got a hibiscus, we just infused hibiscus flowers in our raw wildflower and it turns it nice dark and purple Ooh. and tangy and fruity. It's like really, really good. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, for those hotheads, people love like spicy stuff. Right. And I'm not, I'm not So what is this one? It's habanero hot honey. Ooh. It's habanero hot honey. They so it's do like a, like slow a hot, burn. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's you a beautiful You might put it on burn. like fried chicken and stuff. Yes. That's what I could use, yes. that's what I would use it for. People, this is what folks use our habanero for. They do, pizza's a big trend. Uh, if you like vegetables, yeah, uh, Brussels sprouts, carrots. Oh, uh, sounds amazing. Because I like hot. Yeah, yeah, cauliflower. Sounds wonderful. Mm -hmm. And chicken dishes. Yeah. I would put it on my meat. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Just, no, 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 I no, would. no, 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 no. I would. You're, you're, you're right. You're right amongst the like the the, the top honey loves. Trust yeah. me. That's yeah, everyone yeah. doing that stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So if I have a beehive on my property and I don't want it there, should I call the exterminator or? 
or <laughs> should I call a beekeeper to come get it? I would just call a beekeeper because we'll come out and get that stuff. You know, yeah. maybe somebody on my team. Like I'm, I'm not in the bee yard. These I used to be in right. the bee yard all the time. I figured you time. started it from scratch, yeah. so you had to be out there. Yeah, but I've grown a team now, so I have uh, someone keeping our bees for us. Good uh, for our urban honey. So just as far, and I should probably clarify. Clarify, we have two different product lines okay. right now. We've got Urban Honey, which that comes from our lots. Yes. And then and we have our flavor profile, which consists of the four flavors I just Correct. That we just talked about. So just FYI, I know we didn't yep. talk about that. So if y'all listening, that's that's <laughs> what it is. And by this time, you'll probably have found out that we're working on other things as well, and new flavors and new product awesome. lines. So if if we call a beekeeper to come get the hive. Yeah. What do they do with that? They just, they just, you know, the hive just is usually. Just relocate them somewhere? Yeah, yeah. So it's usually a swarm yeah. that, that, that made a hive somewhere, and then we just come and knock them in the, get them in a box and just take off. And you wear spacesuits? Yeah, well, you don't have to when you're. <laughs> <laughs> Why you, did you write that down space to say? Suit. Did, I did you, not you, write oh, that, that down. off the top of your head, you just said that? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was just props. All right. <laughs> right? Don't you have the full gear? Yeah, yeah. So, like, it's like a, it looks like a dirty space, space yeah. suit. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, we don't have to wear that though when we're doing like capturing a swarm because okay. swarms have nothing to protect. They don't have, they haven't established a home yet. Really? They're just in transit and yeah. So like you know. So they don't feel threatened. Not nah, they, they got they have no babies to uh, to protect. So that honeybees are very very programmed. Okay. They're super programmed. So like you don't have to worry about like getting stung during a swarm. I've seen I have a friend Emily yeah. Mueller. Uh, she had Mueller Honeybee Rescue. She's awesome. She every time she goes in with nothing, and she just like you know, psh, you know. Here's the thing though, I That's don't like risky. getting stung. I don't like getting stung, <laughs> right. and I also realize that I, we don't know everything about honeybees. Right. So I, I suit up. Yeah. I always suit it up. For sure. Yeah, I ain't got for time sure. for. So getting have stung. you seen the bee movie? Yeah, I've seen it. Is it the greatest? Why are you asking me about the bee movie before? <laughs> Because it just, I just thought about, you have five kids. Yeah, they, yeah. It's got to be like their favorite movie. It is. Every, it is every like movie hilarious. Their it is funny. It's funny. Beekeepers get mad at that stuff, though. Really? Why? I mean, I don't care. At but the like, bee movie? Yeah, because it's not, it's not accurate. Well, but I know it's for entertainment, so I, don't, right. I mean, I don't care. It cracked me up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I learned, like, like, you know, how they work together. And so, yeah. I mean, obviously, they're working actual jobs, like people jobs. And that's not <laughs> normal and yeah. realistic. But... It got me to thinking how they all work together, yeah. though, and yeah. have their own job yeah. amongst the hive. Every, yeah, they all have their own jobs, several jobs usually. Right, so as ridiculous as it, they brought yeah. it to the most ridiculous amount, yeah. you know, that you can think of, yeah. it, there's some bit of truth on how honeybees operate. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they have several jobs, and then they all sound like <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld. So, like, yeah, yeah that's, that's the truth. The two truths I, I learned. From See, that so movie. you know I know absolutely <laughs> nothing about bees if I'm asking you these questions, right? It's so. okay. That's great. That's why I wanted you here. I wanted yeah. to learn about them. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you have five kids. They're five all kids. invested in working with you guys. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. And like, so we have two older ones, 15 and 11, two girls. And we only planned on those two. But then, like, you know, we're my wife and I are getting over, older. And yeah. we're like, oh, we're, we're good. And yeah. then we have a son. Oh, my God. Six years later, we have a son. Great. Right. Sam, it's a miracle. And then we have twins, twin boys. Oh, boy. And that's when I, like, I literally, as soon as we found out, I called the doctor. I was like, I <laughs> can't get an appointment. <laughs> bring, your, bring your sharpest sword, you know, yep. do whatever you. So, like, really, yeah, it, 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 the younger ones are coming up. Sure. Seeing this whole thing, and, That's and, and you know, they haven't missed a beat. The older ones, they, they, you know, I started doing this when they're like four and one. So it's 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 they've been around for it. But for the sure. boys, I think the boys will probably be way more part of the business than than the girls are because it's just it, it's just their their age. I didn't start doing this right. full time until two years ago. So like this is all the boys know. Right. Anybody, yeah. uh, any of your kids allergic to bees that you know of? I don't think so. Okay. That's a good thing yeah, in your business. Yeah. <laughs> right. I don't know what Do you live next out. door to the vacant yeah. lot? It's right on the corner. Okay. It's literally right around the corner. So that's pretty awesome. How many employees do you have? So we got like one employee right now. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll definitely, that's one of our, one of our 2023, we have like a, this list and it's definitely a hire on a production sure. manager. The production is, is, is pretty freaking easy, but like we need someone to do that so that I can free myself up to go right. do other things, maybe develop new product lines. Like we stumbled upon uh, making this high, sweet hibiscus tea after. So after we make our Ooh. hibiscus honey, we were left with buckets of hibiscus flour soaked in, soaked in honey. 
And so we just brewed it, right? Yeah. And then we thought that we were on the verge of a really awesome hibiscus tea, which we were, but then we didn't realize that the chemical composition was actually taking, you know, creating a, a situation where fermentation was oh, going to happen. So you got this beautiful, sparkling hibiscus beverage now right. that we have that probably has the same properties as like kombucha but it tastes really good so oh, wow. you know we're, we're, we're you know 20 so there's is, a science mm -hmm. behind all this too yeah there's certain mean, acids in the honey yeah. that are the same acids that are you know found in the fermentation process of beer and wine and things like so that. like 10 years ago would you ever think you'd be sitting here talking about no. the science behind honey and the acids and the composition and the no, I mind I, blown, I, oh, right? I thought I'd be talking about cell phones and stuff. Right? <laughs> Can you hear me now? Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, I want to thank you, Brent, for a great discussion about Akron Honey. Thank you. We now know that Akron Honey is a company inspired from your passion to learn, grow, and create. You have not only helped in the effort to save our honeybees, which are not probably going to be extinct anytime soon, but you have created a truly great product, all while teaching others, our youth and the community in particular, how to be good stewards of our environment. You are a model of inju... I can't even say that word. Why did I write it? Inju... Ingenuity. Ingenuity. Thank I didn't you. even see I knew what you were talking about. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> it's one of those things. That can and has inspired others to be themselves. I know. Be yeah. compassionate <laughs> and be good. I'm Stephanie York. Thank you for joining us today on Forum 360 for a global outlook with a local view. Forum 360 is brought to you by John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, the Akron Community Foundation, Hudson Community Television, the Rubber City Radio Group, Shaw Jewish Community Center of Akron, Blue Green, Electric Impulse Communications, and Forum 360 supporters.